to really commune with them. And to me, that is the main part of communion, communing with the Lord. Um, communing with the Lord, that I want to encourage everyone, is so easy. It's so easy. I think too many of us make things very complicated. For example, I was awake during the night. And after a while, I thought, oh, I'll get up and talk to the Lord. So I just sat in a, sat in a comfortable chair and was quiet and just said things when I felt like saying them. I um, smiled at the Lord because I was sure he was there listening. And just nice and easy. And read the word each day. It truly is our manual. It will help you in and out of every tight spot you get into, believe me. Um, and it doesn't have to be hard. A phrase, even a word sometimes, you can meditate upon, coming backwards and forwards. So make it simple and make it pleasant so you're looking forward to it and the, and the Lord's looking forward to it as well. Uh, and I loved you a horn this morning. Glenn, it was blowing when I walked up the stairs and I thought I must thank you um, for that because I do love to hear that horn blowing even though I know that's not what it's called, but it is a horn, isn't it? So far, yeah. Yeah, it is a real horn. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to look at Abram. Um, now my glasses have fallen to pieces, um, so we're going to just have to go with the Lord. Um, so in um, Genesis 12, you'll be able to read about it, and on for a couple of chapters to get a lovely introduction to Abraham. Um, so the Lord is going to is choosing him um, to be a very very important person in his family, uh, and he calls him forth. And he's living in a certain country, and the, call, the Lord's calling him to another country. So he is obedient. He goes there, um, and then different things happen in his life. Um, his nephew gets caught up in the wrong place, so Abram goes off and rescues him. And as he's returning back from that rescue, he's met by Melchizedek. Now Melchizedek is an, a mysterious character in the Bible. He turns up a few times if you look in your concordance. And um, the s scholars seem to agree that it is Jesus. They say the main thing about him, he has no mother, he has no father, he's come out of nowhere and he goes to nowhere. Um, so see it as Jesus. And Melchizedek comes forward. And to me it's fairly strange, really. And I put myself in the place of these people and I thought if someone came up to me out of the blue, um, I, I'm coming back from a war, I'm feeling fairly pleased with myself because I've won. Um, and this man comes and gives me bread and wine. You know, there's no introduction. And the Melchizedek speaks a blessing over him as he brings that bread and wine. And that's our communion, the bread and wine. So it's a, um, it's a blessing. Um, it, it's much more than a blessing, but I haven't unraveled all of that. And I thought I had another week <laughs> to try to unravel it a bit further. So I leave you to do your unravelling uh, as well. But it's the bread and the wine, and it's bringing a blessing um, to Abraham. Ab he's still called Abram at that point. Um, so we are going to do the same. Um, as we know, as we walk through the word, uh, that Jesus' body was broken, that we have abundant life. His blood was shed to wash away our sin. I mean... Absolutely, absolutely priceless. And so simple. Well, not, not, for, not for Jesus, but for us to receive it. But we are asked in communion to just um, take the little wafer representative of the bread and to eat it. And as we do, to think of Jesus' body being broken, that we have abundant life. And abundant life means, um, if you read it in Isaiah 53, all of our griefs and sorrows are gone, all of our sicknesses and diseases are gone. So um, anything we've got of one of those, we just tell it to go. It has no place there. 
because the devil is under our feet. Amen. And I think the more we can really understand and appreciate that, the less um, the devil can trick us. And just say, ping off. You know, he has no place in anyone who's received Jesus into their heart. So as we eat the bread, we, we, we're considering all that Jesus Christ has done for us. He paid the big price. So Lord... Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have triumph. Everywhere we go, we have triumph. We have victory. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we thank you as we eat the way that we consider your broken body that was shed for us to take away our griefs, our sorrows, and any sickness and any disease. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah says, though our sins be as scarlet, they're washed as white as snow. 